it almost sounds like I'm lying, but I'm not. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Is Coyote just a Kubota copycat? Hmm. You tell me. Well, it's pretty similar, doesn't it? Well, I mean, not the size of the machine, but the color scheme. They're both four tires and wheels and front end loaders. Cabs even. Mirrors, lights. Boy, the similarities are almost, almost endless. Well, what sets these machines apart? Is there any history, any shared history between these two? Any animosity between these two? Let's dig into it now and have some fun. Now, Daydong is the parent company of Coyote, and uh, Coyote, as far as I can tell, is really the name that's just used in the US market. Daydong seems to be what's used in all other markets worldwide. It may not be cut and dry, but that's, I believe, uh, the general, general consensus looking online. Now, historically, there was a project at one point that both companies, Daydong and Kubota, worked on together, I believe back in the 80s, designing a certain series of tractor where there were some components used from Daydong, I believe the transmission, and uh, who helped with the design as well of that series of tractors, of Kubota tractors, okay? However, that's really the only commonality, the only shared history between these two manufacturers, two different countries, Japan, South Korea, okay. Now, that's where most of the manufacturing is done for both of these brands. And now there's a lot of assembly, okay, and support and, and distribution and dealers, of course, here in the US as well. Recently, this year, beginning of the year, Kubota was hit with the largest fine ever for, a, for falsely labeling something as made in the USA. They had a lot of parts that I guess were coming from overseas because they are a foreign company and labeling them as made in the USA. They got hit with a, with a big fine for that. So biggest one ever in history. So, you know, these are international companies. We've talked all about this stuff. I mean, it's very hard to find just a strictly made in the USA product anymore, especially with something that has so many parts and pieces in it. And, and these two are no exception and that's, that's okay. They're still stateside distribution, stateside dealerships, stateside customer support. There's tons of US-based jobs that are being created because of these companies. So that's a good thing. So Daydong moved into the US market in the 80s with the Coyote brand, all right? And fast forward to the very early 2000s, 2002, Kubota ended up suing Coyote based on some pretty obvious similarities, right? So they felt like they were infringing upon um, the color scheme and the hood design, some other aesthetics. And that case went on for five years before it was settled without really sharing any of the details. You could infer that uh, Kubota wasn't successful because these tractors are still orange, right? They didn't, they didn't change. Maybe they're a slightly different shade of orange, although Kubota has actually changed their shade of orange over the years as well. But beyond being tractors, running on with diesel engines, and just the general similarities that all tractors carry, that's about it. I mean, the, 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 well, this is a, this is a gear drive machine, but if we talk about compact tractors, the hydrostatic transmissions, right? You have a treadle pedal on a Kubota. You have the side-by-side -side on the Coyote. You have, if you compare a similar model size, you're going to have way more lift capacity on a loader and a three point hitch on a Coyote compared to a Kubota. The Coyote is going to cost less money. The Kubota is going to cost more. Kubota's gonna have double, roughly, maybe a little bit more than double, the dealers than Coyote has in the US, which is still substantial on, on both sides. But, I mean, the only thing that they really share is a color and the general idea of being a tractor. That's really about it. Now, one of the weird things for me in the tractor industry is how each brand is known for its color. I mean, if you look at any other industry, it doesn't really operate that way. I mean, with vehicles with shoot with uh, atvs you can normally get all sorts of different color choices with boats i mean you know the list just goes on and on the only other real industry that's kind of known by its specific color and it's kind of convoluted is construction equipment because there are so many brands are like a mustard yellow right i mean it's almost like the general construction industry is known for that kind of construction yellow color although there's some other orange shades and you'll see red you'll see white you know uh pop up here and there but I don't know why that is with tractors. You know, why are tractors specifically available with just one color? And just because you have that color, 
why should you all of a sudden get to own the color? I, it, the whole thing's weird to me, you know? I mean, and I get it. Uh, historically speaking, you know, you see a John Deere green tractor in the field, it's iconic, you know, but I can't wrap my head around why it applies just to this industry and nowhere else. You know, and in some ways, I think it's, it's we're fortunate that Kubota didn't win that case against Coyote, you know, because it's, it would have set a bad precedent. It's not like Kubota was the first manufacturer to come out with a tractor, right? And so could Kubota have been sued by John Deere or whoever came before them for building a tractor that was similar to theirs, right? And so it's just, it's kind of weird, you know? I, I, the, you, I don't know why you can own a color, I really don't. I mean, John Deere Green, you know, is protected too. It's just, um, I think it's odd in, in this kind of an industry. And who knows, maybe if a brand came out with multiple colors of tractors, maybe that'd be a big hit, I have no idea. But it just seems to be ingrained in, in this whole color scheme thing. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Now, you know, these are both my personal tractors. This is my equipment here. These, are, these machines aren't for sale. I like them both. I, I think there's great things about both of them. Years ago, I was just a John Deere and Kubota guy. Uh, thinking they were the best value for customers and and you know through the pandemic again I, I say this a lot I say it frequently but with more information and time it's all it almost be weird if your opinion didn't change right I mean as you get smarter more intelligent gather more information and even circumstances like in, in this case with manufacturers you know those are external things that that can influence and, and determine a decision too and so Kubota was already one of the higher price machines that were out there and through the pandemic got that much higher same thing with john deere and and it's really an opportunity for companies like coyote like tym to fill a void you know they're mature companies coyotes well with their parent company over 70 years old you know they're a billion dollar a year sales company worldwide they've been around for a long time they know what they're doing and so they're they're just kind of the next wave the next echelon and you can get a lot more tractor. Again, if you're comparing head to head for like a, a similar model, you're getting a heavier machine that's more capable and more standard features on it compared to a Kubota or a Deer, and you're getting all of that extra stuff for less money. It almost sounds like I'm lying, but I'm not. And so I, I'm selling more and more Coyotes because I'm trying to keep the used tractors that we sell in a reasonable price range for folks because some of these other ones are getting just too expensive. You're gonna have folks that have issues with Coyotes, you're gonna have folks that have issues with Kubota and with every other brand of tractor that are out there, right? And so individual dealer support will vary, individual tractor experience will vary, right? I mean, you're gonna have lemons here and there, but this is really just about giving you perspective, giving you something to think about for all you out there that are looking to get into the tractor market at some point, I wouldn't shy away from Coyote. I wouldn't shy away from Kubota either. I mean, Kubota makes, they build an awesome machine. You know, I mean, it, they're RTVs, they're construction equipment. They just know what they're doing. They're an incredible company. You're just gonna pay more for that and get less. And so the resale value, you hear that sometimes too. Well, all I do is sell used tractors. I don't sell new tractors. So I know a little bit about resale because that's what I've done for, for years and years and years. And it, it, like anything, you know, when you buy it brand new, that's when you're gonna get the, hardest hit on your resale value. Beyond that, unless you don't do any research at all and you buy at the absolutely wrong price, you're not gonna take a gigantic hit. Inflation does help over time, right? Propping up values, but it's not uncommon, you know, say you own a tractor for five or 10 years to sell it for 80, 70 to 90% of what you bought it for, unless you're just putting it through the ringer. You know, if you're just beating the snot out of that and racking up hours, it's not uncommon to get, to recoup 70 to 90% of what you paid for it that five to 10 years earlier. Well, it's time for us to get out of here. I can hear some thunder. It looks like we're gonna get the first rain in nearly a month. It is dry as a bone. September, 2024 here in Michigan. I don't know what it's like where you're at, but it's been a dry spell. So anyway, if you're in the market for a used tractor, a nice clean, it'll be cleaner than this. This is a little dirty, okay? Nice clean one. 
or some brand new attachments or you want a whole package put together, we'd love to help you out. Go to our website, goodworkstractors.com. If you know what you want, you can buy it right on there. If you don't, shoot us a message and we'll help get you set up with the right equipment to fit your needs. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.